Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I have put together an incredibly random list of tips and tricks to help you guys with just certain random things that I've kind of come up with that have helped me do things easier and sort of cheat and get away with things a little bit better. So, if you are interested in learning about a lot of random things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis that just make life easier, keep on watching. Okay, so the, my first two tips are gonna go hand in hand actually, and they're gonna be about eyelashes. So I actually have mentioned these in my um, eyelash video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that down below. Um, what I like to do sometimes when I'm looking for like a really intense curled lash look, um, I like to heat up my eyelash curler. So what I'll do is I take my blow dryer and I just have any any metal eyelash curler that you have. Um, we'll heat it up. I'm just gonna keep the blow dryer up to the metal part so that it gets nice and warm. I'll cry if my blow dryer is broken. Da, 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 da. Okay, so always test this on the back of your hand because you do not want to put a hot eyelash curler to your eyeball. So just test it, kind of just wave it around a little bit just so it's a little bit cooled off. And then what we'll do is we will just curl our lashes as normal. Oops. And I'm just gonna leave it here for like 10 seconds. And the reason this works is because your eyelashes are hair. And just like the way we curl our hair, we apply heat to it. So the same idea works for lashes too. So, I don't know if you can tell. I'm just gonna look straight into the camera. If you can tell, cool if you can't. Um, obviously this makes a huge difference when you just curl your lashes. Sometimes I'll just curl my lashes when I'm not really wearing much makeup and this will act like I have a little bit of something on. Um, but yeah, that's what I love to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply mascara because I like to do it right after I curl them. I don't like to go back and forth because when you get the product on, it'll cool or the product will dry curled. And you'll notice that I'm gonna make a giant mess, but that's A-OK -okay because we're gonna use our second tip to get rid of that mess. And this mascara is like mega town cheap. I've, I'm, if you watch my other video, you'll know that I'm obsessed with the L'Oreal Telescopic, but it tests on animals because L'Oreal has not made the switch to cruelty free. So I like to just try to experiment with stuff and this mascara is so, 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 so cheap. It doesn't wear as well as the Telescopic, but it definitely is really good for the price point. It's by Essence and it's the Lash Princess Sculpted Volume Mascara. And if you want this to work even better, have a little fan going on in front of you to um, cool your lash as when it was hot. Mascara, no mascara. Huge difference. So I'm just gonna do my other eye really fast. Yeah, look at look at how like curled those are. They're almost like flat to my eyelid. And they will fall, like you'll notice these ones have fallen a little bit, which is why I would actually use a fan, a little fan in front of you. I don't have mine, I left mine in Boston at my best friend's house. Boom, curled. In an effort to get this to dry so I can fix the mess I made, I'm actually gonna take my blow dryer again and I'm gonna use the cool shot. Do not blow hot air on your eyes. I'm just gonna turn this on, use the cool shot and just kind of blow my lashes up so that they'll, they'll keep that curl a little bit better. Hopefully all that's dry. So second tip, what I like to do is typically when you have mascara all over your eyes, your instinct is to wet a Q-tip and just to wipe it, but that will make it a mess because you're gonna wet the product that's dried on your eye, especially if you have eyeshadow on, it's gonna be a very terrible idea. So take a dry Q-tip and most mascaras will just flick right off. If you have waterproof mascara, this will not work. So keep that in mind. If you are using waterproof mascara and you get it on your lids, immediately wipe it off. Cause obviously when that dries, that stuff is staying there. <laughs> I'm gonna attempt it to get this off my eyes, but uh, oh, okay. Cool. So now just take whatever brush I use for any crease color or whatever shadow you have and I'll just go over that and boom, there you have it. Okay, tip number three. Um, this one has to do with bras, and it is especially helpful to people who have bigger chests than people who have smaller chests, but it could work for both. So for me, I have an issue with people who make bras, okay? I find that if you are a person who has bigger boobs but has a tinier uh, like rib cage, you're, it's gonna be really difficult for you to find a sports bra that does what you need it to do. For me personally, I don't even know what size bra I am anymore because I live in sports bras, but for a reference, I'm probably like a double D, probably like a 34, 36 double D is what my, my bra size is. So when I look for um, sports bras, what I'll find is the 
If you need a large for your boobs, but like a medium or small for your rib cage, they just don't exist. And if they do exist, if you go for the medium or small, which is where your support comes from, what many people don't know that when you wear a bra, your support comes from the, um, the band that goes around your rib cage, not so much the straps. So when I go to buy a sports bra and it's I need like a small or a medium, what I'll find is the space that's covering your boobs is like this big. And I'm like, well, I need it to be this big. I guess that doesn't work for me. And if I get an, a large or an extra large, which may work as far as the spacing goes, it's just too wide. And then it's just swimming on me and it doesn't work. So when I pick up a bra that has some padding in that some sports bras or little bralettes will come with padding, I find that they're just like these tiny little pads. Like they're just small. And for me, when you put that on a, a person that has bigger boobs, the, it, the bra will tighten and then you'll be able to see the outline of the, the padding that lives in the bra. So for me to get away with getting a smaller bra but also want padding, I decided to go on Amazon and I ordered large pads. So for reference, this is the bra I'm talking about. I just got this from TJ Maxx. It's just like a skinny girl kind of bra. These like aren't the largest um, like cups, I guess you could call them, in the world. And what makes it even worse is they come with these little like, these tiny little pads, which for most people will work and this is perfect. When you have a bigger chest, it's gonna fill out the bra and it's gonna, you're gonna be able to see the edging around this cup and that's where I find my issues. So I went on Amazon and I ordered these guys, which are like really huge and I, I know that, but this is gonna make it perfect so that you can't see any lining, um, any pad lining that you would be able to see with this guy. So I'm gonna show you the difference and what this will actually transform the bra into. Okay, so I just put the large cup inside the bra and what you'll notice like already is it's already gonna allow you to fill up so much more of the of the bra than this side would. So I'm just gonna put the smaller one in. So this side has the larger cup in it and this side has the smaller one. So when you have a bigger chest and you put this on, you're gonna see this line with a, I can't really tell on camera. So if you're gonna wear like a white t-shirt, you can see where the padding lives. If you put a bigger pad in there, it's gonna, it's gonna live right where the seaming is so you won't notice it at all. So I do this with all my sports bras. I went on Amazon, I bought like a 10 pack of these, these larger cups and they just completely made sports bra wearing way better. So I will link everything down below on where to get these things, but this was just a fun a fun trick to kind of make smaller bras better for us big boobied ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Next tip is something that I learned when I started wearing hats. And I, I never used to wear hats because I always like my volume and I don't want my hair to get ruined. But now that I live in Florida and I don't know how to do anything with my hair that isn't in a ponytail or completely blown dry, I started wearing hats a lot. So what happens for me is I'll, when I wear a hat, I'll obviously put my hair up. You know, I'm just gonna put the hat on and I'm just gonna show you. Sorry for all like the weird shadows, but this is for instructional purposes. Hats on, and what happens for me is I, these are, these just drive me crazy. I just have these crazy little wings in my, in my hair that just never go away. And what I'll do is I'll take my hairspray bottle and I'll just spray it and it gets all in my ears and it just drives me nuts. And then while I'm out, I'll notice that they kind of pop out again and it, dry, and it just drives me crazy. So what I started doing is I bought a really cheap um, brow gel and I use that to smooth my little wings when I wear a hat or really any hairstyle. So this one's really cheap, it's from Essence again, and it's just the Lash and Brow Gel Mascara, and it's like two or three dollars. So I'll take this and I'll just use him to smooth out all the little flyaways I have. And this can work with anything. If you wear braids, if you have your hair up in a bun, it's just a really easy way to just smooth out flyaways without spraying half a can of hair hairspray into your ear. <laughs> So I just use that. And the also nice part is you can just throw this in your bag. So instead of throwing a mini size, um, instead of throwing just a mini size hairspray or some type of product, this can just live in your purse or in your backpack and it's just so much easier to use. And it just smooths everything away. You don't need a brush and everything just lives in here and it does its job. Next tip is for earrings. So if you are somebody who has ear piercings that are a little bit older and you wear a lot of heavy earrings, maybe you sleep in earrings, um, what that will do is it will sometimes kind of stretch out your ear piercing and it'll make earrings kind of hang and just kind of look a little bit funky, especially studs. So what I found is if you have an earring and you have it living in your ear and you have a smaller back to it, so these guys I wear every single day and what happens is sometimes with studs is if you don't have an earring back that can kind of make them um, sit flush against your ear, which most, most earrings come with a smaller um, back, what will happen is they'll start to kind of hang a little bit and people will say, oh, your earring's gonna fall out and it's like, it's not gonna fall out, it's just not sitting well. So what I found is if you get a bigger earring back, it'll help make that earring sit flush on your ear. So I'm gonna take this small one out. So obviously the bigger guy 
is the earring backs I ordered off Amazon and the smaller ones are your traditional size that come with most earrings that you purchase. So this earring back is much bigger and the reason I like these as opposed to the clear disc ones that you that you might um, recognize is these aren't as big so they won't, if your ear piercing is a little bit lower, it won't hang beneath, beneath your earlobe. These ones just sit perfectly on the back of your ear and they make whatever earring you're wearing sit flush on your ear so it looks a lot, a lot cleaner. Next tip is talking about how I choose to fold my t-shirts. And by my t-shirts, I mean Matt's t-shirts because I hang all my clothes because I'm a crazy person, but for him, he likes to keep his in a drawer. So I found that it's a lot easier to keep your drawers um, more organized and not only more organized, but be able to see all the clothes that you have when you organize your drawers like this. So if you wanna think about it this way, it's kinda of like a filing cabinet. So you pull your drawer out and you can see all your little files or t-shirts um, as opposed to stacking them. So if you stack them in a pile and you open up your, your drawer and you you know, you know wanna wear a certain shirt and you can't find it. So you have to rummage through all your shirts and then you pull it out from the bottom and then your whole drawer is a mess. So for this way, it's a lot easier for people to just keep things organized, especially boyfriends who don't always take the time to keep things organized. So I'm gonna show you how to fold them because they're a little bit, they have to be a little bit smaller and kind of like a small cube to keep um, folded in a drawer this way in a, in a shallower drawer. Okay, so what you wanna do is lay your shirt out flat. You don't obviously fold every single shirt like this to learn how to do it um, just kind of standing. But you put your shirt um, laying flat face down. So this is the front of the shirt and this is the back. So what I like to do is I fold in my sides first. So I'll just bring them in like this. And we'll bring this guy in like that. Okay, so make sure that he's nice and symmetrical. And then once the sides are folded in, we will bring the top to the bottom, or the bottom to the top, flatten that. So now you have like your, your more typical fold, which is how most people fold their t-shirts. And then you're just gonna fold it in half once more. So now it's a tiny, perfect little cube. And then they're just gonna stack each other this way. And then that way you can see all the shirts that you own. Okay, next tip comes to you from the kitchen. And this is actually a fun thing that I learned from my besties, Doug and Emmy, when I moved into their house when we moved to Florida. So something cool that they do is, first of all, they use a coffee pot to do their coffee. They don't use Keurig. And that was something that I, we always had Keurig in our house and it's just obviously a single cup. So what a fun way to kind of use a coffee pot but not waste the coffee is when you brew a pot in the morning, like, like this one is actually from this morning, there's a whole bunch of coffee in here that we did not drink. So instead of pouring this down the drain, once it gets kind of cold, what Doug and Emmy usually do is they keep a carafe in their fridge that is dedicated for iced coffee. So what you'll do, obviously, you'll just take your coffee that's left over for that no one drank in the morning, pour it into your carafe, and this guy just lives in the fridge. So every time you have leftover coffee, you pour it in here, and then you have endless iced coffees to make. If you're anything like me and spend way too much money on iced coffees at Starbucks, this is just a fun way to kind of have um, iced coffees whenever you want at home and you can kind of make them fun. You can get different creamers, find ways that you like to make coffees um, just to kind of make it a little more fun instead of spending dollars at Starbucks. Okay. Next. All right, next tip is gonna be for cleaning your jewelry. And jewelry, specifically, I'm talking about um, diamonds or anything that has like a shine to it. So if you have any rings or anything that you feel like could use a, a spruce, they don't even need to be real diamonds. It can just be kind of like the cubic zirconia ones. Um, but this is just a fun way that I like to clean up um, my rings. And anytime my friends come over, I steal all their diamonds and I clean them for them too. So this is really simple. All you need is a toothbrush. I would recommend a soft bristled one that you don't use. Obviously this one's old and gross. Um, this is just going to be more gentle and it's going to not break any um, any jewelry that you're cleaning. So you just literally need a toothbrush and some dish soap and that's that's it. So what we'll do, wet our toothbrush, get some soap on there. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could just kind of make this in a mixture in like a cup and like with some hot water and um, let it sit for a little while. But this is just a quick, ways, easy way to do it. So I'll wet my ring a little bit and you just take the toothbrush with the soap and you just kind of scrub it. Be really gentle, especially if you have a more um, small ring that has kind of tiny prongs and a smaller settings. You really don't want any of the bristles to mess anything up, but it's just it's just toothbrush and soap, so it's a very gentle. Secret to getting diamonds and rings to be really clean is to flip them upside down and get inside the prongs and all the stuff that lives underneath because that's where all your lotions and other products get stuck. Move on to your other one. And I like to do this with my earrings and really anything that has some sort of stone in it that you want to get shiny. This wouldn't really do much for anything that's kind of tarnished, like a bracelet or something that, like an Alex Anani, something like that would really need something that's gonna soak and something abrasive to scrub. 
So now that they're all scrubbed and sudsy, we'll rinse them off. When you do this, don't leave anything in paper towels because you don't want anyone to accidentally throw something away. Dry these off. Super easy. No need to go to the jeweler to get them scrubbed. You can do it right at home. Next tip is for cleaning our pesky little beauty blenders, which are the worst. I'd rather clean 300 brushes than clean one of these things. Um, so I found a really fun way to get these clean and not having to do much. So there's kind of two routes you can go. You can go the one where they soak overnight for like long periods of time, or you can pop them in the microwave. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna go the microwave route. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a, a glass jar, any, or even a mug, anything you have. Okay, so I'm gonna take my beauty blender, I'm gonna wet it, just like you normally would. And this one isn't too, too dirty, because I really don't wear much makeup anymore. Um, he's definitely got a lot of uh, concealer and foundation on him. So I'm just gonna wet him, and then I'm gonna put some soap in this. And I'm just gonna fill it up with some water, all right? And then I'm gonna put my beauty blender in the solution. And then we're gonna pop him in the microwave. And I'm gonna start with just like a minute. And what this is gonna do is it's going to one, heat up the water, which will kill a lot of bacteria and anything that's kind of gross living in there. And it will also break up any of the makeup or anything that's kind of stuck in there, because it'll get warmer and softer and it'll, it'll be a lot easier to get it cleaned out. So we're gonna let this guy run and we'll take him out when he's, when he's done. All right, take him out. And this will be hot, obviously, because we just put it in for a minute. So what I like to do is just take it so you can already see, the more I squeeze it, the more stuff is coming out. The water's getting really sudsy and it's getting really cloudy and all that stuff's falling out. And this is just a lot easier to do than running this under the water and just squeezing it a hundred times. Everything gets out, you'll waste less water. It's just a little bit easier because the heat really breaks stuff apart. So you might need to do this maybe like two or three times depending on how bad yours is. But I find that once I really start squeezing it and focusing on the areas that really have a lot of gunk on them. All right, so I'm gonna dump this. So gross and dirty. And I'm just gonna take him and squeeze him because there definitely are a lot of suds left in it. And this is kind of the tedious thing with, with cleaning beauty blenders, is just squeezing them so you get all those suds out so it doesn't ruin the elasticity and bounce of your beauty blender. Now these little black specks have been in here forever. I think I got eyeliner or something like that in it because they just won't come out. I've tried a hundred times, I just can't get them out. But as far as all the concealer and the foundation that was living in there, that's been pretty good. So if you squeeze it and there's still some white, you know obviously that there's more soap in there. I'm only cleaning one at a time, but if I were doing a lot at a time, I would fill up a sink. If you have like a small bathroom sink or even like a big bowl, um, I would do that. I would pour some soap or beauty blender cleaner, whatever you have, and I would fill up the sink with that. I would leave them in there for a long amount of time, overnight, whatever it is. And um, that'll help really get the stuff out and make it a lot easier to clean. Because standing like this and just doing this a hundred times, it just takes a long, long, long time to get stuff clean. So, give him another squeeze, and boom. Like I said, I can't get these out. I've never been able to get them out. I don't even know what it is. But as far as everything else, all the foundation and everything is out. And we are clean, my friends. Alrighty, friends, that concludes my wacky, incredibly random list of tips and tricks that I put together for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope that maybe at least one of those things you can apply to your own life. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and if you really enjoy my videos, hit the little bell, because that guy will notify you whenever I upload. Um, YouTube is not telling all our subscribers that we're uploading. So that'd be super cool. And if you feel like it, go uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's just Shana Greer, at Shana Greer on Instagram. I'm always on my Instagram, I'm always on stories and doing things like that. And I'm actually doing a really fun little rainbow series for makeup and stuff. So if you're interested, follow me over there. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you in my next video.